Welcome to Grizzly Creek Redwood State Park. Located on Highway 36 in between Fortuna and Red Bluff. But it's a nice little grove that was set aside. And let's go check out this visitor center. For such a small park, it's got one of the most amazing visitor centers I've ever seen. Alright, so here's the front kiosk. Come around here to the side entrance. We definitely got plenty of poison oak here, so you want to keep your eye out for that beauty. Check out this visitor center. How cool is this? Oh. Over here. All right, so check this visitor center out. Nice library. Look at all these stuffed edibles. Nice kitty. Don't worry, it's not gonna come alive. Good. <laughs> It's the old misery wit before power tools that would they used to cut the trees down with. Oh, the Stellar J. And there's the visitor center. Welcome to my park, Grizzly Creek, Redwood State Park. Super excited. And we can see it flowing into the Van Dues and behind me. This is my new classroom. It's got a little stand for a projector and outlet, and that kiosk opens up into like a whiteboard so I can project on it and give my little fireside chats here. How cool is this? Can hardly wait. Probably next Friday I'll be doing my first fireside chit chat. Check out this beautiful mother. Good old goose pen trees. How you doing, little buddy, buddy? I ain't gonna hurt you. You're a beauty. <laughs> Go get him. Climbing up that tad oak. Uh, check out this beauty. This is wild hazelnut. And part of the ways you can tell is to gently touch their leaves. They're so soft and cuddly. Ooh. Yes. Apparently the squirrels love these to death, so it's really hard to find any ripe hazelnuts, but I'm going to keep my eye open now that they're lit up for me in the deep, deep woods. Oh, look at that. They're all over the place. Wild hazelnuts.
your little gnome home. More gnome homes. I'm glad there's gnome sign here in Grizzly Creek. Makes me feel right at home. Home gnome. Definitely, we're further inland here at Grizzly Creek. I'm about 30 miles from the coast, so a little drier. More fires, which gives us these lovely goose pen features. Oh my, my, my. Look at that. Beautiful. Ooh, this is the biggest tree I've seen in the park so far. At least on this loop. This is the Grizzly Creek Trail Loop, right out of the campground. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's like, looks like turkey tails from here growing on that old dead tan oak branch. I'll look for a close-up example for you. Because we're close to the Van Dus and in Grizzly Creek, we have a lot more songbirds here in the redwood groves. Beautiful. Oh my, yes, <laughs> beautiful, with gnome home, this looks like almost a Venus gnome trap tree, but it's not that high, and it's, look, it's got a lower entrance, we're gonna have to go in here, <laughs> I think I found my favorite tree in the park so far, I'm gonna call this the gnome home tree. All right, we're gonna do a close up of this gnome tree. Yeah, we gotta get ourselves inside here. Ooh, here we go. Oof! <laughs> oh, yes. Redwood bay windows. Yep, this would definitely be my little spot. And I like it how it's got this little side window. Just me inside a tree, my favorite place to be. Oh, I'm digging this tree. Found me another gnome home tree. This one is a beauty. Oh my. Loving this park. Oh. 
Oh. More gnome homes. Yes. This is a biggie. Woo! All right, this may be the biggest one in this grove. Complete with goose bed. I've never seen this before. It's like a double goose pen. It's got one started on this side as well. And if there's many more fires, look at that. You can, it's gonna burn right through and leave the tree with like legs if it survives it. I've seen a few of those in Founders Grove. So this is kind of like the process. Look at that, there's another one over there. Let's go check him out. Oh, that's a beauty. Super healthy, even with that big hole at its base. Sequoia Sempervirens. Check out that poison oak. It's so pretty. I wish it didn't affect me and others, so. Oh, good. Here we have an example of a nurse log. So we have this down redwood, but even in death, it continues to provide life. We got huckleberries growing on there. Looks like maybe thimbleberries and a baby redwood growing up out of the root base. Nurse tree or nurse log. Here's the root ball of that beauty. I'm stoked there's so many wild hazelnuts in here. Look at the, the light green leaves surrounding these giants. Oh, really nice blend of trees, tan oaks. And the hazelnuts, some Douglas fir. And down by the river, there'll be Willows and maybe even cottonwoods will look this up. Back side of that nurse log. Okay, now I'm on the Fisher Wook Trail. Make sure I'm pronouncing that right. Bunch of thimbleberries down here along the river. So this trail is following the Van Dusen River. It starts, you cross Grizzly Creek right out of the campground, and then this goes west to paralleling the Van Dusen. And I imagine we're gonna hear a lot more songbirds in here. Now we're into the alders. A lot of alders, some willows, uh, and the blackberries. I can hardly wait for summer. I'm gonna have a purple beard. This trail is right below the road, so you get some road traffic, but you also get the nice sounds of the river and the songbirds. Not too bad. Like I mentioned, this trail is between the Van Dusen and the 36. Just a narrow little strip, but check out these lovely features. These are called maidenhair's fern or five-fingered ferns. Although I've never seen one with just five. Are those gorgeous? And look at these black stems. So sometimes it just looks like they're floating. And I believe the indigenous people would use those for highlights in their baskets. That beautiful black stalk of the maidenhair ferns and the deep, deep groves. Nothing quite like the sound of the wind blowing through the big trees. You do have to be careful of these old growths on a windy day. Well, on any day, but especially on a windy day. And I'll show you some widow makers when I come across them. 
explain what those There's are. There's a cutaway bank, which gives a nice example to show you how shallow redwood roots are. We're like eight to 12 feet. But what allows them to endure is they interconnect their roots under the ground and form like a root network below our feet. A few more goose pens or gnome homes. Oh my. That's really cool. That one's too skinny for this fat gnome to get into. I think we're gonna be having some classes here. What a sweet little ring. Not a fairy ring, but a lovely ring of redwoods. Someone's put in a nice ring of benches here. It's like a little display stand there in the middle where people have left the treasures they found down by the river. Don't see any fossils, but some interesting rocks and bones. Let's go check out the river. It's a really lovely burned out stump. Still standing. But this one is no longer alive. Unless, perhaps, this is a clone of that burned out tree. But we'd have to do a genetic test to make sure. Pretty impressive, even in death. It's like floor sculpture. Oh, beautiful. More goose pen beauties. Got a nice tan oak hanging here on the bank of the Van Dusen. It's really cut away in here. But these floodplain deposits is also what helps the redwoods get so big. All right, and here's Creek side. That's Grizzly Creek flowing into the Van Dusen River. And the campground's right where the to come together. There's also supposed to be marbled merlets nesting out here. So I think I'm gonna come out and do a survey, see if I can see any at dawn. But that is to come. Beautiful Grizzly Creek Redwood State Park at the convergence of Grizzly Creek and the Van Dusen River.